All right. So more details on this knock system. You've got an ammonia tank. We call it anhydrous ammonia. So aqueous, ammonia likes very much to bond with water. Now, the, the chemical, it's something that does very naturally. Uh, so anhydrous is saying that there's not any water in this. So when you get that pure ammonia, it's like a propane tank or a CO2 tank or a helium tank, right? It's liquid in there, but it boils at a temperature lower than the atmospheric. So as it as you let it out, it comes out as a gas. So it comes out the top, and you got a pressure control valve, which is maintaining 17 pounds. My tone of voice might tell you that. That number might not be 100% correct. And uh, as a gas expands, it cools off. So if you've ever used, you know, a CO2 fire extinguisher a lot, you'll see the frost building up on the side. So this tank also cools off when that happens. And then as it cool, the liquid inside cools off, it builds less pressure and it doesn't work as well. So to make sure it builds enough pressure, we've got heaters that are underneath it. We got a little electric heater and the liquid flows in and fills it up and it boils it off and it goes in the top. And, and that's how we maintain, I want to say 60 pounds on the tank. Uh, I say there's no water in it but this stuff loves to absorb water. So there might be, I don't know, half a percent, a tenth of a percent of water on each of these trucks, right? So you get a 6,000 gallon truck and a tenth of a percent is 60 gallons of water. Boy, I hope it's less than that. Because this, <laughs> so there's some tiny bit of water in it each time. You may get a gallon out of each uh, of water in each 6,000 gallon truck. And uh, that water is obviously not boiling at the same point as the ammonia, and it is not getting used, and so it just accumulates in the bottom of this tank. And then eventually this heater is covered in water mostly, and then you can't get the heater to do its job right, and then this heater trips off and you have trouble maintaining that 60 pounds, and then somebody is out there hitting the reset button over and over again every 15 minutes, or putting it in manual and saying, well, if I only put it at 20% heat, it won't trip on over, over temperature on the heater. Let's, make, let's see if that gets me 20 pounds. And let's see if that lets this thing run without me tripping it, without it tripping every 30 minutes and me sitting there all night being called over and over by control room. So those are obstacles we deal with. Uh, there are drains that we had installed on this but there's no procedure for doing it to actually use the drains when there's still pressure in the tank. Uh, what you're supposed to be able to do is you've got a barrel of water and you got a little rubber tube and you know, crack it open and you're watching the barrel and at first, if you're getting water out of it, there's nothing really going on. It stirs around a little. And then eventually, the ammonia starts going out and starts bubbling around like fucking crazy. And then when you do that, because the ammonia likes to bond to the water, this is not a big dangerous gaseous thing. Instead, it's just a little bit of ammonia smell and you shut the valve and everybody's happy. But we never got that procedure approved. And uh, that is not something we do. And instead, it's something we put off to an outage and do basically once a year. So then that 17 pound header goes up and it splits off into a north side and a south side. And we control the flow separately to the two sides. And then that goes into the flue gas path. And then that goes across the SCR. And the SCR is all this titanium and platinum and expensive metals because that's what it takes to make it work. 
and uh, it's all these squiggly lines and surface area, and there's, do we have three layers right now or two, Jackie? I hey, we did have three. I want to get to them back to here or not. So, we were designed to be able to run on two. And the third layer was there so that the, when the two started wearing out, and the, the in a catalytic reaction, the it's not supposed to actually get used in the reaction. But you do have stuff that plates out on it, and it no longer works as well. And so then you're supposed when these two layers started to get worn out, we're supposed to put in a third, and then when it started not working as well, then we're supposed to take out one and replace it. Or is that take out two or I don't know. I don't know. There was some grand plan that had us changing one out every couple of years. Every five years? I don't know. But what we really do is during every outage, we go in and we go with every major, every annual outage, we go in with a sub truck and we clean off all the top of it and then they cut out a little section and they send it off for sampling, they go, I wonder how long this is going to last. All right. Where does Knox come from? Incorrect. Oh, oh temperature. Uh, temperature is a better answer. So what is air made of? Uh, hydrogen. Hydrogen. So you are 78% nitrogen, and you are 21 point something percent oxygen, and that other fraction of a percent in there has everything else. It has water vapor, and it has carbon dioxide, and it has whatever else is freaking out there. So... In the presence of these high temperatures, the nitrogen bonds with the oxygen and it makes nitrous oxide, which NOx, because it's not always NO2, sometimes it's NO3, I, I don't know. So it can be NO different things, but nitrous oxides, which then cause acid rain and poison to the environment, and it's bad. So we spray ammonia. And the ammonia is nitrogen and hydrogen, and you end up with the nitrogen in the ammonia bonding with the nitrogen and the NOx and going back to nitrogen, and the hydrogen and the ammonia bonds with the oxygen and the NOx, and it turns into water vapor. And that's what we want to happen. That is the good reaction. And if you ask, I can like point an arrow and say NOx plus ammonia equals nitrogen and hydrogen. And I can even balance that equation. But if you talk to a real chemist, they will say that there's like 70 different steps that these atoms go through of all sorts of semi-unstable things on their way from getting to NOx back to nitrogen and oxygen and, and water vapor. I guess I'm doing like uh, percentage of what, I mean like if it's, if it's too rich in oxygen, it's like you know, it's an NO2. If it's too rich in nitrogen, it's an NO3. Something like that. Don't know the answer to that. All right. So, how much ammonia we use depends on how much NOx is in the system, and the NOx is coming from the heat making the nitrogen bond with the oxygen, and there are things we can do to minimize how much NOx we make and therefore minimize how much ammonia we have to use. So how do we minimize the amount of oxygen that's available? Keep the temperature. Okay, you want to go with temperature first. How do we control that temperature? By burning, by using the burners as lower. Okay, yes. So, this was FD. The force draft is blowing in at the burners.
and it is blowing in at what we call overfire air. So we have a Charlie row of burners above all this. And whenever you're using that Charlie row, then not as much heat gets absorbed in the walls, more heat carries over, you get more knocks. By having these overfire air blow in, it holds down the fireball and that gives it more heat gets pushed into the walls or absorbed by the walls before it carries over. And so those are the two ways we control heat. So what was the other lever we had? Oxygen. How do we control oxygen? Air. Right. So this FD fan inlet vein is looking at an excess O2. And so that is the amount of oxygen that didn't get used up in the fire, right? So, so the coal is supposed to be pure carbon. And it is supposed to bond with oxygen and make CO2, and that is a clean burn reaction. That's what we actually want. So we've got to make sure that there's enough oxygen so that every carbon molecule has oxygen to bond with, or else we're wasting coal and it's not burning and falling on the bottom or something. Or if you don't have enough oxygen for all your carbon molecules, you get, you get CO. And CO is poisonous and bad, and we don't want to make it. So we, out here at the stack, are monitoring CO, and we have a limit. I don't have a limit memorized anymore. So uh, I know that normally we're looking at 20 parts per million, and then it goes into alarm at 100. And uh, if it gets to 150, that is unsustainable. And you're, but this is a, yeah. back in the day, this was a one hour average. This was something that was really hard to maintain. Uh, and now I don't remember whether it's a 24 hour average or a 30 day average or whether we got both. But anyway, they've stretched that time limit out, out on what the limit is. And I want to say it's 1600 pounds per BTU per day, and eh, eh. shit, 1.6 pounds per BTU and 1,609 pounds per hour. Ah, that felt better. I'm coming up with real numbers eventually. <laughs> so anyway, 20 parts per million is what we normally run. That, and that's pretty much none. So the idea is that normally you're running about 2.8% extra oxygen and you're getting almost no carbon monoxide. And uh, someone might go, you know what? I think I can get away with less. Let's try to put a, a minus 0 0.1 on that. Uh, that. And then the FD fan is going to put in a little less air and try and bring that down to 2.7. And then you're probably going to make a little less NOx and use a little less ammonia. And then you might get CO in alarm. And a lot of times what happens is that you can get away with it at whatever load you're at. But then the unit ramps and everything changes. And sometimes it only changes during the ramp. So if you just ride out that hour and a half of ramp and get back up to full load, everything will settle back out and CO will drop back down and you're okay. There's also a tap coming off of FD fan line that goes up here to the ninth floor and mixes with the ammonia. I said nine, I bet that's 11. Nine. Nine? Yep. All right. Mixes with the ammonia before it goes in to the flue gas.
think that's all I got on ammonia. Jack, you got anything to add? No. Okay. All right.